Yeah, I mean, right as of right now, comparative to, to last season, my results are, are better um, and have been more consistent. Uh, yeah, I mean, on these head skis, I, I, I do feel like I have a lot more speed. My, my split... Are, are really good and I, I'm just going I'm going into sections with more speed uh, when I'm doing a training run I just carry more speed and, and I, I don't have to try as hard to be as quick like I just feel like I've, I'm on such solid um, piece of equipment and I, when I want to turn they turn and when I don't want them to turn we go in a straight line and uh, and um, yeah I mean it's it's uh, it's it, it just feels it feels good. Plus, there's uh, oh, you can't see. Mark Wiseman phones me every day to make sure that my races uh. are good. You know, having a guy like that in your back pocket too. Um, <laughs> talk to him later. Um, Mentally, I think I'm I'm a lot more ready. Um, especially this this last adrenal quadrennial. Sorry. Um, um, we were going to ski in South Korea first. Just, just to you know, to uh, emphasize on that. Uh, but uh, the course is um, it's aggressive snow, like in Saint Moritz or in Colorado. Uh, it's kind of funky. It's a funky one-off race, so it doesn't have any of the historical uh, kind of downhill straight sections, gliding sections. Um, it's medium terrain. I would say it probably suits myself more than guys that are, are really good at charging down steep hills. Um, pressure with or without Eric, uh, you know, it'd be really nice to, to have him on my side and and um, and answer questions and be able to work with him on the hill. But uh, as of right now, that's not the the case. So it's it's uh, I mean, the pressure for myself to do well has always been the same um, from when we started two seasons ago and started prepping to, you know, prepping at the beginning of this season and, and summer training and everything. I mean, the pressures and, and how I've come into each day to try and be more professional and better at skiing and whatnot. Um, we had to leave guys behind with the team uh, for the Olympics. And now it's, it's a little easier to qualify, but it's, it's more just preparing with the coaches and figuring out uh, the game plan that's going to work for me. What's it been like balancing skiing and fatherhood? <laughs> um, question. Um, well, I, I don't. I mean, I mean, it's a balance, but it's. Uh, you know, I go on the road, and I have to be a ski racer. Um, pretty hard to be a father from. 7,000 kilometers away most of the time, so um, I think it's more my wife that notices uh, that the jobs that I do when I'm there aren't being done. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's. Uh, I think it's it's not as easy being on the road. I think that that's probably the, the hardest part. I'm in for me now. You know, I go home four or five times a year, uh, thanks to Audi and thanks to the to the team and them seeing that. And um, I mean, if we're gonna keep ski racing into our 30s and into our late 30s. Uh, and we're going to have families and stuff, you definitely have to um, acknowledge that, that those are important on them because we had so much money before Vancouver, but uh, rightfully so. We had an Olympic Games. I mean, if it wasn't for the Vancouver Olympics, uh, probably, you know, Chani, myself, Eric, Francois Bork, uh, Mike Janik probably wouldn't have had the careers that we had. Um, and with the, with the amount of money that we had before the Olympics to to bring up our development program and bring us through, um, you got to go to the good with the bad. And you know, we had a couple of years that were were harder, and now it seems like uh, corporate Canada stepped up and we get all the support we need. Um, I, I I couldn't be more grateful for for what our country has given us and and uh, and what the Alpine Canada has done for us. Uh, proportion. I mean, it's really skiing's pretty simple uh, if you took the speed out of it. Thanks very much.